All right, Shalom. I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well, and salutations to the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the Brother Ties of War, back at you again with another lesson. And uh, let me read this quick scripture. This is 2nd Edges 7 and 18. Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for the wide. For they that have done wickedly have suffered straight things and yet shall not see the wide. All right. This The title of this lesson, um, uh, it, it may be comforted or excuse me, comfortable versus uncomfortable. Or when the Lord wants you to grow, he will make you uncomfortable. All right. So either of those two. Well, uh, I would title this show. And um, as always, I pray Yahweh Bashim Al Shai that he allow these lessons to be edifying, all right, to those of the whole four elect. So, you know, comfortable versus uncomfortable. Comfortable, you know, comfortable. You know, our flesh and our minds want to be comfortable. You know, that's 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 nature of a man. You know, you want to be comfortable. So comfortable, especially of clothes or furnishings, providing physical ease and relaxation as large as is needed or wanted a warm quilt. OK, so comfortable is providing physical ease or relaxation. All right. Being relaxed. You know, your mind is at ease, you relax. Well, guess what? Being comfortable in this world, in this wicked, God-forsaken, wicked society, man, is a weakness, okay? It will destroy you being comfortable in this side, on this side, in this time, man, while Esau Edom is ruling. Because when you're comfortable, you are weak, you become complacent. In some cases, you might even become lazy. You see? And let me say also, your defense is down. You, you're, you're off guard because you're comfortable. Being comfortable in this side, being comfortable in this wicked society is a demon, man. It's a fucking demon, man. Excuse my French. Okay? Okay. It is a demon. It makes you complacent. In some cases, it can make you lazy. It weakens you. It weakens your judgment. All right. And it makes you off guard. Comfortable, man. Someone would say, well, well, why, why, why is that? Because first off, Esau Edom is ruling. And we're in this, this wicked society where left-handed shit, you know, wicked things are held in a higher standard than being righteous. All right. And by the way of you being comfortable is a way to ease in and to accept the behavior of wickedness. So now let's get uncomfortable. It says causing or feeling slight pain or physical discomfort. Causing or feeling unease or awkwardness. Okay. So uncomfortable. Causing or feeling slight pain or physical discomfort. Yeah. When you hurt, you know, you're feeling slight pain. You in discomfort. You know, say you got a toothache and the shit is hurting your head, your nerves is, is hurting your, your your head, getting a headache. You know, you might want to go get some Tylenol to relieve the pain. Your discomfort, right? It sits you down. Being uncomfortable sits you down, okay? It says causing or feeling unease or awkwardness. Now, I use a woman for an example, all right? You know, say you and your woman not seeing eye to eye. She's not listening to what you say. She's being rebellious, man. You know, you get into this, this argument, she feeling some type of way, you feeling some type of way, 
All right. She come in the same room as you and, you know, you feel awkward. You feel the tension in the air, man. You know, she might even if she a wicked woman, she might even um, increase the fire of uncomfortableness, unease that in the awkwardness that that you feel. You know, she might have a cup and, you know, slam the cup down or something on the table or say some words to you, you know, that negativity so that what she can draw out that negativity in you, you know, to fight her back carnally in an emotional way. That's being what? Uncomfortable, unease or awkwardness. You know, it's weird. It's a weird feeling. You know, you want to just get out of there, man. Well, while we in this uncomfortable spirit, you know, let me read the scripture again. It says, Never, 2nd Edges 7 and 18, Nevertheless, the righteous shall suffer straight things and hope for the wise. For they that have done wickedly have suffered straight things and yet shall not see the wide. All right. So the, the, the righteous and the wicked have suffered straight things. But the difference is, is that the righteous has hope for the wide, which is the kingdom. All right. Which is seeing salvation. But the wicked that suffer straight things, their destiny is destruction. Okay. There's a difference. So being uncomfortable while being while knowing this truth. All right, in our journey, and our strive towards salvation through Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, being uncomfortable is better than being comfortable, because being uncomfortable keeps your head on a swivel. It keeps your your mind focused on the goal. It keeps your guard up, your defenses up. All right. Um. Yeah. It keeps your guard up. It keeps your head on a swivel. It keeps your focus. It helps you grow. It makes you learn from your experiences. It makes you hard. Okay? It, it, it hardens you. It, it Basically, the hardening I'm talking about is the tough skin. You know, we need tough skin in this wicked society. We need tough skin to to endure all the way to the end you know we, we we pray to the lord for strength you know strengthen our minds strengthen our bodies make us perfect well you reach you start to reach toward that and those attributes of righteousness when you're uncomfortable when you're comfortable your guard is down you, you know, like the scriptures say, uh, a gift destroy for heart. You know, your judgment is not right. You know, you're not as strict because you at ease. You know, our apostles, man, they uh, uh, teach us brothers about being comfortable and uncomfortable. You know, and how being uncomfortable is better than being comfortable. So. Since the, I said, you know, said all that, let me say this as well. You know, I say these things um, from the little experience that I have learned in this truth. And I say it humbly. I apply these things for myself first. You know. I'm just a brother hoping to edify those of the whole for elect. All right. So, you know, I want to read this second address seven. And I'm going to start at the first verse. Just want to read a few verses here. All right. It says, and when I had made an end of speaking these words, there was sent unto me the angel which had been sent unto me the night of four. And he said unto me up, Edris, and hear the words that I have come to tell thee. And I said, speak on my power. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place that it might be deep and great. But put the case of the entrance were narrow and like a river, who then could go into the sea and look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? He's comparing this to the kingdom. All right. This narrow way, this one way to get through or get into this, this wide, 
all right? This wide place, this sea, this beautiful world is only through a narrow path, one way, all right? And that's through Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai and through the doctrine that is taught to us brothers from Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, all right? Here with apostles and elders of Great Millstone, teaching 100% truth, okay? Yeah, he that got ears to hear, let him hear, man, all right? Anyway, Second Edges 7 and 3, and I said, speak on my power. Then said he unto me, the sea is set in a wide place that it might be deep and great. But put the case of the entrance were narrow and like a river. Who then could go into the sea and look upon it and to rule it? If he went not through the narrow, how could he come into the broad? Verse 6, there is also another thing. A city is builded and set upon a broad field and is full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow and it is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. And one only path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. If this city now were given into a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the, dan the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? All right. So in order for us to get to the kingdom, we have to go through the straight gate. All right. We have to go through a time of difficulty. All right. So, you know, I was meditating on this scripture here and I was thinking about these times, you know, these the time we're in, we're in the end. We're in the end of Esau's kingdom. And the scriptures say, Jacob is up next that followeth. You know, you're looking at the shifting, you know, of power. Where basically the Lord is setting up Esau to uh, believe he's going to bring in his new world system, his beast system. And he's going to be taken out. But during this beast system that we're going into, all right, it's, it's narrow. So it's either E's narrow path or Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah's narrow path. So everything is basically narrowing down. It's either the left or the right. Okay, it's either E or it's Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. You know, so the more and more we get closer to salvation and the Lord speed up these prophecies, the more and more narrow it gets the more difficult it gets you know and then of course those of the whole four elect will eventually will be at ease and that ease that we're going to be in is going to be for good man you know because the kingdom Yahweh Shai is coming to bring the kingdom verse verse uh verse 10 and I said if it's so Lord then said he unto me even so also is Israel's portion so you see that this um this saying here, you know, of going into the wide, you know, in a beautiful place, your only way to get to it is through a narrow path. All right. It says um when fire, you know, there's another analogy of when fire is on the left, fire is on the right. The narrower it gets, the closer you get to that treasure, it gets difficult. All right. And it's only one way in and, you know. And no way out, one way in and no way out. You know, the Lord's comparing that to us brothers in this truth. All right. And our journey, our strive, you know, for righteousness, our strive for salvation. He says in verse 10, and I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion, because for their sake I made the world. And when Adam transgressed my statues, then was decreed that now is done. Then were the entries of the world made narrow, full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. You know, so, hey, this truth ain't no joke, man. You know, this is why we have to pray. This is why we got to pray every day, man. It's a fight. It's a fight, man. Um, I think it was something else I could continue to read, but I'm going to end it there. 
think I read the point. You know, straight gate. Uh, back to the the title. Um, comfortable versus uncomfortable, or when the Lord wants you to grow, He will make you uncomfortable. Cause the point of this lesson is uh being uncomfortable. That's the highlight of the lesson. Being uncomfortable, and um, it's easier said than done. Cause when you're going through that fire, man, it's 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 a test. It's a challenge. You know, it's an awkward feeling. You know, yeah, 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 discomfort. You know, and like I said, man, um, you know, I say, I say these things, um, just through the little experiences that I experience. You know, being uncomfortable. You know, like the apostles say, man, it's better to be uncomfortable than to be comfortable. You know, you have to sort of make uncomfortableness your homie. You know, your 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 best friend. In order to survive. It's the only way you can survive, man. Through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai. And through discomfort, you learn, you grow. So, I want to give all praises to Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakakodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And salutations to the Lord's hope for elect. Shalom. Hey, they go 444. And ending on 444, that's the spirit, man. Shalom.